Hi, I'm Tom Reeve, Deputy Editor of SC Magazine UK, and we're here with Guy Caspi, CEO and co-founder of Deep Instinct, specializing in machine learning for the cybersecurity industry. Welcome. Thank you, Tom. We're seeing artificial intelligence revolutionizing everything from machine vision to uh, self-driving cars. Can you explain the potential that artificial intelligence has for changing how we identify and assess cybersecurity threats? Yeah, sure. Uh, so, first of all, a few words about the cybersecurity domain as a whole. Uh, today, what we see in the market is that 99% uh, of the malware that exists are a mutation of previously existing malwares. Mm. And despite this fact, the traditional methodologies, including of the big companies that including dynamic analysis and some heuristics and some other very advanced behavior analysis, cannot uh, detect the malware. Uh, deep learning is very resilient actually to the fact that it can generalize and understand information even with huge amount of data which is missing. So you, what you're saying is that the sort of some of the existing techniques for detecting this are they're too literal in their Correct. So for example if I show a bottle mm -hmm. to a computer vision uh, technology the computer vision like Google Picasa will be easily detect the bottle but if I will abstract some of the bottle with my finger it will be very hard to this technology to see that this is a bottle. If you take deep learning and you apply this with computer vision capabilities, this system will most probably recognize this image as a bottle. Exactly the same, this is what we are doing with malware. We have the ability to understand even minor changes or even more than this in the big picture and then we can recognize and detect in advance without taking this for further analysis that this is a malware. Now, this is the beauty of uh, deep learning. Deep learning is actually can understand raw data. Indeed. So artificially intelligent systems in their, in their purest sense are self-learning without any intervention from human beings. But how do we ensure that as they're learning, they learn the things, they learn the, um, the responses that we want them to learn? Yeah, it's a very interesting question. Everyone asks, how come? Mm -hmm. So first, they don't know that they are dealing with cybersecurity. So the neural network doesn't know. Actually, I would say that uh, uh, the behavior and what we are uh, aiming for the system of what kind of behavior we want the system to do, this by itself implying supervised framework of what exactly will be inside the data set. The data set that we are putting in the neural network for the training is actually very important, but we create in advance the labeling of, let's say, zero for legitimate file, one for uh, malicious, or in different uh, computer vision that you just mentioned, or even cars, what they are doing, you know, there are certain binary numbers for specific activities. So cat could be one and dog can be two. And then the system slowly but gradually running tens of millions of samples knows exactly to define between zero and one. But mm. actually the system doesn't know that this is a cybersecurity domain. It could be cats or dogs. It could be cat or dogs. It could be many different uh, other samples. But the idea is to label correctly on a huge, large data set, and then the system can learn this. Interesting. So we often hear that neural networks are modeled uh, after the human brain, but I mean, to what extent is, is that actually true? Because I mean, as I understand it, we don't really understand how neurons work. So um, how can we model that in databases and algorithms to use that in cybersecurity? Yes, Tom, I think you are right. I think the, right, the correct term would be that uh, the neural network are inspired from the brain. Actually, I think the most important uh, uh, issue that we took from the brain is the fact that the brain, our brain, have billions of uh, neurons and synapses that are agnostic to data. And this is very important because deep learning actually is the first family of algorithm in the world. 
in the last decades or even more than this that is really processing raw data and this is exactly what our brain is doing when you are looking at me mm -hmm. when you are listening to me you are calculating on your brain huge amounts of data and you can be we couldn't care less what kind of data the human mm -hmm. can process any data and actually this is i think the most important key that deep learning is doing uh, which is very simple and very intuitive and this is exactly how the brain and the neocortex which is doing all the cognitive activity in the brain is doing as well so you can you don't we don't exactly know how um, neural networks work do we yet we can program a graphics processing unit to simulate billions of electronic neurons could your so what you're telling me is that your system could be programmed to to do something besides detect cybersecurity threats? Yes, well, as I mentioned earlier in one of your questions, uh, the system is agnostic to raw data. Right. So theoretically, tomorrow we can uh, look on a weather mm -hmm. prediction, on the stocks, right. on many different things that we can label as one and zero and can learn from this. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you have the ability to run of, on GPUs, so if you have the right speed and processing power to calculate all these billions of neurons, which are, by the way, very simple uh, binary numbers, while on our brain, when you ask earlier, it's just shooting fires. But it's simple, it's the same. So can these um, deep learning systems share uh, what they learn with each other? So <laughs> I'm laughing because it's a very advanced uh, question. There are some noble approach really uh, in the market just coming in the past year or two years. Mm -hmm that allowing unsupervised network capabilities that can share several neural networks capability together, learn from them and create another conclusion which is based on the aggregate uh, information coming from different neural networks. The answer is yes. So we could have, we could have a system in, that's operating in one place, learn to detect a certain kind of malware and share that information with, with dozens or hundreds or thousands of other systems around the world. Correct, yes. And even more than this, you can have, for example, the correlation between uh, weather and the cyber attack. And if there is a correlation, so you can take separate neural network, one will have the uh, recognition of the weather versus uh, malware, and one will detect malware, and there will be another network that will aggregate these two neural network for one conclusion and prediction. So if it's a sunny day in a certain part of the world, yes. cybercrime might yeah. be going up or down. Yes, for example. Yeah. Right. To what extent do you think that the, um, these deep learning systems could help us overcome the cybersecurity skill shortage? I think it will be, uh, it will be a process. Mm -hmm. There will be no uh, revolution. It will be evolution. But I think that in two, three, four years from now, you will see the big companies in the world that the main people in these uh, companies are still dealing with analyzing and behaving millions of malwares every week. Uh, according to uh, Cisco and some other big companies, there are one new million malware every day. And the ability to, to analyze them is largely depending on high-skilled people. And, and this, the volume of the people is enormous. So what will be in the future, I assume, in deep learning, Deep learning will recognize only few of them because all the rest it will block into the network and, and the people will be very focused in this, I would say, ransomware and all the big problems and nation uh, malwares. Thank you very much, Guy Caspi from Deep Instinct. Appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you, Tom. Thank you for hosting me.